Good morning. We're going to take a brief recess from eating now while we uh, make the presentation of the colors and a couple opening remarks. So everyone, please turn your attention to our color guard on the left side here. Everybody ready? Free color. Free set. Ho! I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order. Ho! Left. Hey! Close rags. Give a nice round of applause for them. And now for our invocation, we would ask Miss Crystal Bell to come forward. Let us pray. Creator of all humankind, we give you thanks for this day. We thank you for the legacy and the life of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We thank you for his ideals and his values, God, and we thank you for the many places and things that he has done to help us get this far. God, we still have so much further to go, but as we are in this place and your presence abides, we ask that you would be with us, that you would speak through the speaker, that you would give us enlightenment, and that you would show us how to serve you in a more perfect way. In your son's Jesus' name we do pray, amen. amen. Thank you, everyone, please sit. So nice to see so many of you out here today. A little bit of snow didn't keep you away. To remember the legacy and the life of Dr. Martin Luther King. Uh, I know I'm in my late 60s now, and uh, this country, in many ways the world, is a lot different than it was when I was growing up in the 1950s. And that's largely because of the efforts of Dr. King and the people who worked so closely with him. We've got a great program for you today. And have some wonderful music and inspirational speech by Robbie Robinson, who always does an outstanding job. I think it's just important that uh, we remember the legacy of Dr. King every day and not just one day in January. So I think it's our obligation as a people to be worthy of the type of individual that he was. And that's, that's our job as Americans, to be worthy of his legacy. I want to introduce some of the folks who are here uh, who represent you. We have... Uh, State Representative Michelle Musman's here. We have uh, Trustee Herb Porter from uh, Hanover Park. Is Mrs. Porter here today, Herb? Yes, from the Poplar Creek Library. Thank you for coming. We have Trustee Karen Mills. We have Trustee Michael Gaeta. Trustee Gary Palafis. <laughs> Trustee Gary Stanton. And our village clerk, Bev Romanoff, is with the management team providing the breakfast that you're enjoying today, so you need to thank them for that. <clears throat> I also see that we have somebody else here today. Um, Raja Krishnamurthy is the congressman from the 8th. Congressional District, and Roger, do you want to say a few words? Good morning. Good morning. I am honored to be here. Happy Dr. King Day. What a day to be here. It's cold outside. It feels warm here, though. 
I want to observe the three rules of public speaking. Be short, be sweet, and be gone. I just have three quick points I want to make. I want to say, first of all, thank you so much to Mayor McLeod, the trustees of the Village of Hoffman Estates, and the Cultural Affairs and Awareness Commission for putting on this wonderful breakfast. Can you give them a big round of applause? And I want to thank all of the elected officials who are here today for attending. Your support makes this day so important, so special. Give them all a big round of applause again. My second point is this. You know, our national motto is e pluribus unum, out of many, one. And that is a national commitment to dedicate ourselves to our national shared values. And that's what I believe Dr. King Day represents. Um, you've heard of the term evangelical Christians, and I respect them. I happen to be an evangelical American. And from my bully pulpit in the United States Congress, I preach those shared values every single day. Those are the ones of uh, liberty, freedom, equality, hard work, and prosperity. And if you believe in those values, you are an American. It doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. It doesn't matter how you pray. It doesn't matter how you dress, whom you love. And it certainly doesn't matter how many letters there are in your name. There are 18 in mine. All that matters is this. Do you live a life of character? Do you raise your children right? Do you work hard and play by the rules? And do you try to give a little something back to your community and country? Because if you do, you are an American. And everyone in this room will stand shoulder to shoulder with you as you pursue your piece of the American dream. Are you with me on that? And my third and final point is this. Dr. King would not have had as lasting of an impact had he not dedicated himself to service. And that is equally what this day is about. And as Dr. King said, you don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and your verb agree to serve. You don't have to know about Aristotle and Plato to serve. And you don't have to know about Einstein's theory of relativity to serve. All that you need to serve is this. You need a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love. And if you have that, you can serve. It's a tough path to follow, but it's a path we must follow. And so I just close with my favorite saying, which is that yesterday is history, tomorrow's a mystery, but today's a gift. And that's why we call it the present. And so I'm just so honored and blessed to be with you here today just for a few minutes of your precious time to celebrate your community, to celebrate this event, and how tomorrow uh, and today uh, we can make America a better place. So thank you so much, and God bless all of you. Thank you. Once again, if anyone has not had any breakfast, there's, there is still breakfast available. We're getting to the present, to part of the presentation with our um, singing and choir, so I'm going to bring up Miss Deborah Willis to introduce them. <coughs> Good morning, everybody, Good morning. and happy Martin Luther King Day. Um, we will start with our, some musical selections from Christian. Yeah, my tongue is getting tired this morning. From Christian Tabernacle Church in Roselle, Illinois. So let's give an applause as Christian Tabernacle Church comes to us and rendering some selections. Thank you.
of our featured speaker today, Reverend Robbie Robinson, the senior pastor at the um, church, this church here, the, uh, yeah, the Christian, yeah, Christian Tabernacle Church in Roselle. Um, there's a lovely long introduction um, to Mr. Robinson in your program, so I'm not going to reread that. I'm just going to um, welcome him to the frontier for his um, speech today on the power of unity. 
First, let me say thank you. I always consider this an honor to be before this wonderful village, this wonderful committee, this wonderful mayor, and all of the people who come out on what is usually a very chilly day to celebrate the birthday of Dr. Martin Luther King. And it is somewhat amazing to me to think that on today, Dr. King would be celebrating his 89th birthday. For every picture that we see is naturally of him as a young man. There are no pictures of him as a senior citizen. So in my mind, I try to picture what Dr. King would be like if he were here today. But I believe his spirit is looking down on us at even this very moment. I'd like to thank the committee for um, inviting me once again. I think it's been three or four years since I've been here. And I just want to thank the committee, thank all of you for coming out here. I would be remiss if I didn't thank what I believe is the best choir in the Northwest suburbs, Christian Tabernacle Church. Amen. 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 As well as my family and friends who are here with us today. Uh, just as the congressman said, there are three points to public speaking. Uh, preachers have three rules for speaking as well, something I call the three ups. The first is stand up to be seen, speak up, to be heard, and then shut up to be appreciated. <laughs> so hopefully I will adhere to those three ups on today. So the committee has chosen for the theme for today something that I think is very important, very necessary, and something that needs to be understood, and that is the power of unity, because I do believe there truly is power in unity. And if I may, as a subtitle to the theme that the committee has selected, I would like to place a subtitle that is simply, it's time to shine. It's time to shine. With the possible exception of November 11th, 1620, and for you historians, you will recall that is the day the Mayflower arrived in New England. With the possible exception of that date, in this country, the widowed, the orphaned, the poor, and those who are considered alien have always been underrepresented. Even today, their voices remain essentially muted. Why? Because the real power in this country is not in the hands of the populace, but instead it is in the hands of the privileged. I know this isn't a Sunday, but I believe an amen belongs there. <laughs> History has shown us that the strong can take from the weak, but that the wise can take from the strong. And I believe that I would sagaciously suggest to you that wisdom is the greater power than might. And that is a message that we need to get, not only in this area, we need that message to resonate in Washington as well. It is wisdom itself that teaches that there is power in unity, for wisdom says that a house divided cannot stand. And if we in these, what I call the ununited states of America, if we are wise to look at history, we will understand that no country has ever been on top forever. Not the Babylonians, not the Persians, not the Greeks, nor the Romans. And if we want to understand why they had a demise, it was because of their inability to maintain unity. One of our greatest assets is something that I believe is undervalued, and one of our greatest assets in this nation is our diversity. That is one reason why I enjoy this event so much, because I can see people of different colors, people of different creeds, and people of different religions that can come together and to celebrate what another king by the name of Rodney King asked this question, can't we all just get along? And I don't know if it's the free food or the gospel choir, but for a couple of hours on a Monday morning, we can all show that we can get along. Matter of fact, if you turn to somebody near you that doesn't look like you and say, I'm glad you're here today. I'm glad you're here today. Amen.
When you think of diversity, I believe diversity can be described as unity in variety. The holy writings speak of a time when people had eyes but could not see. They had ears but could not hear. And though light was all around them, they still lived in darkness. Their leaders were corrupt, they were rude, and they were boastful, and among them was no voice of reason, no one to shine the light. And like episodes of Seinfeld and Good Times, my brothers and sisters, I believe that storyline is rerunning itself today. <laughs> but there is hope if we can tap into the power of our unity. This nation was founded by people who were unified in their desire to escape a society that they felt was corrupt, a society they felt was exclusionary, and society they felt was unfair. It was founded by people who understood that it is dangerous to put your trust in a government. It is better to put your trust in a God. These people, they fought for freedom, but what they really sought was a light at the end of a long, dark tunnel. A light that would allow them to shine in a society that embraced their ideological beliefs and did not discriminate because of their physiological looks. There was a time in this nation when men and women aspired to make a difference and not just to make money and certainly not just to make babies. It began in communities like this. It began in neighborhoods like ours by people with no titles but who had a desire to improve their surroundings. The conscience of this nation was shaped by the conscience of people who were not afraid to stand up for righteousness and to let their light shine. See, people think righteousness is a spiritual word, but righteousness is as much social as it is spiritual. For the root word of righteousness is what? Right. It is simply doing that which is right. And I don't know about you, perhaps I'm wrong, but it seems to me that if it's right to call out one president for playing golf every couple of months, it should be right to call out another president for playing golf every couple of weeks. Now, I'm not a politician. I'm a preacher, but I got to say what is right. But that takes people with a conscience. People who understand their moral obligation to shine their light. We live in a world where people don't want to shine their light, but we must understand that that obligation goes beyond partnerships. That obligation goes beyond friendships, and that obligation certainly goes beyond politics. We need more people like the Arizona Senator uh, Jeff Flake who put his moral denunciation above political affiliation, who placed ethics above politics, who's thinking more about the future of this country than the future of his own career. We need people like that who want to be a beacon of light and not just a lightning rod. What a person says describes them, but what a person does defines them. But I believe that the more we do together, the more we will realize that it doesn't matter if you are a Republican or a Democrat. It doesn't matter if you are an independent. It doesn't matter if you're black, white, or other because what we have in common is we are all children of God. And as moral, as spiritual beings, we are meant to be a light that cannot be hidden, a lamp that cannot be put out. But when we put our politics, our race, or our culture above righteousness, we essentially become those very people who had eyes but could not see and had ears but could not hear. 
But I'm coming to a close and I've got what I believe is some good news, y'all, because I believe it's not time to whine, <laughs> it's time to shine. <laughs> Matter of fact, let me hear you say that with me. It's not time to whine, it's time to shine. <laughs> so let's stop trying to vilify and let's start trying to unify. <laughs> See, there is power in unity and it's time to shine. We have more in common than we know. Let me ask you a question. Don't you like to eat? Yeah. I like to eat. Don't you like to watch TV? Yeah. I like to watch TV. Don't you like to go to the movies? Yeah. I like to go to the movies. So why are we spending so much time focusing on what we don't have in common when we have more in common than we know? Why are we focusing on the fact that one likes dark meat and one likes white meat? I'll tell you what, if you like white meat, I'll invite you down to the local KFC or the local Popeyes. We'll order an eight piece. You can have the breasts and wings. I'll have the legs and thighs. We'll lick our fingers, high five one another, and celebrate the unity of our diversity. time to shine. We need to show our true colors as a nation. And our true colors are not black, white, or other. Our true colors, my brothers and sisters, are red, white, and blue. This is what unites us. This is what brings us together. This is why I know it's not time to whine, but it's time to shine. Dr. King lived a life and developed a legacy that we could have a meeting like this where people could come together, where we could put down our differences. It doesn't matter how much money you make. It doesn't matter what neighborhood you live in. We are all the same in the sight of God. Dr. King promoted humanism above individualism. He promoted diversity over bigotry. He promoted unification over segregation, peace over prejudice, loving over loathing, building over bullying, and compromising over criticizing. And if you want to honor Dr. King's legacy, it's time to shine. You've got to spread light and not spread heat. <laughs> it's time to talk and not just to tweet. Somebody tell that to somebody in Washington. <laughs> so let your light shine in Hoffman Estates. <laughs> let your light shine in Barrington. Let your light shine in Bartley. Let your light shine in Cook County and Kane County and DuPage County. Let your light shine in your church. Let your light shine in your synagogue. Let your light shine in your mosque or your temple. Let it shine in your community. Let it shine in the state capital. Let it shine in our nation's capital. Let it shine in diversity. Let it shine with integrity. Let it shine through adversity. Let it shine in un match unity. Yes, the strong can take from the weak, and yes, the wise can take from the strong, but no one can take from a people who are in united in unity. Why? Because there is power in unity. I'm all ingest that and, and take that with us as our daily walk. Amen. Amen. Now, followed by Pastor Robbie Robinson, will be the Christian Tabernacle Church Choir of Roselle, Illinois. Pastor Robbie Robinson, Pastor.
that. Reach out and touch somebody's hand. Yes. At this time, we're going to have our chairperson, uh, Earl Henderson. She's going to come to the mic. Um, just, just give us a moment, please. Good morning, everyone. Happy New Year. Thank you again for coming out another year and supporting our event. <clears throat> and I just, the last one, to, I just want to say thank you to certain people, all the volunteers that helped make this <clears throat> event a success. <clears throat> to the library. Sue Lesson, the village administrator, assistant. Patrick Seeger, the staff liaison. Um, the Cultural Awareness Commission members, would you please stand? Thank you very much. The AKs and the Deltas for all of their continued support. Our speaker and Christian Tabernacle Choir. Uh, thank you all for um, supporting our food drive again this year. We had 269 food items and 31 seasonal wraps, and that was sponsored in conjunction with the Culture Wellness Commission and the AKs. We have a young lady here, Isabel LaMichaels. Would you please stand? Is she still here? She is um, a student from DePaul School of Journalism, and she had an assignment, and she chose to do her assignment on this event. So welcome. So I want to thank everyone again, and God willing, we'll see you next year. And did they tell you that we're having an event next month? All right, so we're having a um, Black History Month celebration next month, February 17th, here at 2 o'clock at the Village Hall. You will be getting flyers in the mail, and um, so please put that on your calendar to show up. Okay, now we'll have our benediction by Geraldine Carter. I would like everyone at this time to stand. First of all, this is another awesome day that the Lord has made, and I am so honored to see so many awesome friends and family here. And, but at this time, in honor of the 50th anniversary of the assassination of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, he physically left this earth, but his spirit is eternally with us. Yeah. But so we're not worried about the physical. We know where he is. But it's his spirit that lives on in everything that we do, especially at this important day. So it's an honor for us to be here. So why don't we take a moment of silence to reflect on not only the life of Dr. Martin Luther, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, drum major for justice, but what we need to continue to do. Let us have a moment of silence in his honor.
but for us, those that are seeking justice and honor and making this world a better place. This is a day on for service. Amen. So, oh God, whatever the service may be, whether it is visiting the sick, uh, providing food or clothing for the shelter, attending the needs of an orphan, or just saying, picking up the phone and calling somebody, oh God, let it be a day of service on this day. So Lord, so I live it will not be in vain. So Lord, what do we need to do as drum majors for justice, as Mark did, and as uh, Jesus Christ did, he gave up on uh, his life so that we can be free. So as we move from this place, we need to be of service, not to ourselves, but up to you. So when this day is done, we can say, good and faithful servant, well done. And with that being said to you, who is able to the Lord, who is able to provide immeasurably more than we can ever think or dream according to the power that worketh within each and every one of us. We give him all the honor and praise on this day. Amen. 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 Let it be so and go serve somebody. <laughs>